Well, hello there, and welcome to the second in the series of creating a database from the ground up in C++. Um, I'm Adam Fowler, unsurprisingly. Um, what I'm going to do today is we're going to talk about some kind of standard C++ idioms that we're going to implement, make things a bit easy on the programmer. Um, <laughs> I wanted this to be like a really short five minute video, but it's not going to be. But I'll just uh, quickly rip through everything and we'll see how far we get. So uh, what I want to do today is go through and talk about what's kind of wrong with how we're doing things in here at the moment. So. There's a few um, kind of things that you would expect as a software developer. So in here, for example, this is the GitHub for GroundUpDB. And I've written in a few user stories. So a software developer would kind of expect to include files from our project as they do with any other project at the moment. I'm just including the header file directly. It's not really how people would be including it. They normally include project name slash main header. Um, so we're going to go and implement that. Um, also, as a software developer, I don't generally want to spam and use up the global um, namespace. Uh, as you can imagine, if you're a developer that's writing software, you've probably got several classes or database all in different packages, and we've just eaten up the main namespace. So we're going to add a namespace in there as well. Um, in addition, you know, when there's changes in the line library, I don't really want to recompile my app if I'm not, you know, if none of the function signatures I'm using have changed, um, nothing in my app's changed, why should just update in a dynamic library mean I have to recompile my app? It's really inconvenient for users. So that's a core part of API design which we'll uh, cover today and that's where we'll start talking about the pimple idiom and things like that. Um, but also as the person who's implementing this damned thing, I would very much like this to be quite a pluggable project because we're going to investigate lots of different things. So we're going to investigate eventual consistency and then investigate acid consistency. So you can't really do them at the same time. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is make the product quite pluggable. But in order to make it pluggable, I need to kind of support that and enable third parties and other people to contribute extra code in as well. Um, so I want an extension mechanism to do that. So I'm going to tear apart some of the, the classes. So I've got uh, internal abstraction as well as front end abstraction. So that's what I'm going to do today. But these are a few stories which I've unnaturally grouped together because I'm creating a video, right? Normally these would be separate, separate issues, but because we're going through this in a tutorial fashion, I've put them all in the same thing. So please don't jump on, on me with the, uh, with the valid criticism there. Now, what I've done here is I've added this as an issue, um, an enhancement request in um, GitHub issues. Now what that does is it gives me a number here. And why that's important is because of the way I manage large open source projects. I use a mechanism called Gitflow. Uh, Gitflow basically is where you've got multiple branches. So if anybody wants to actually use your software, they use what's currently slash soon to be historically called the master branch um, or your main branch. Yeah, that's where people get known good bits of your software. If they want an early access release, they go to your develop branch. And if they you know, want to really try out some cutting edge features as it's being developed, they pull on the feature branch off of the develop branch. Now, master is obviously master slave and all that has connotations these days. So we're not using master anymore. I've renamed them. Um, but because we're going to eventually implement things around you know, storing data in groups or um, we're going to include JSON documents and XML documents and things like that eventually. Uh, and because I like trees uh, and because we're growing from the ground up, it kind of made sense for me to kind of use tree names. So I'm so calling this master, I'm going to call it trunk, right? So historical relevance there. And instead of calling this develop, I'm going to call it stem because the stem is part of the tree where all the new growth comes from. So that's what we're going to do. And then the features come out of the stem, you see? So all the new features come out there. So it's quite nice. It's gonna confuse the crap out of anybody who has ever worked on any other project, but I don't care. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I wanna go and create the feature branch for feature number two. Um, now I could do this, but equally for people, and I, I work with many of them, <laughs> who don't like Git flow, it's too complicated. Well, happily enough, if you do a brew install git hyphen flow, you get these extensions. So what I can do, is I can say git flow feature 
feature hyphen two and I my feature branches are feature hyphen two. Now what I've not done yet though, is I've not initialized support for Git flow, so I'll go and do that. Um, branch name for production releases is trunk. Next release is stem. Feature branches, I don't like slashes. I'm gonna do feature hyphen. Release branches, again, for similar reasons, release hyphen, hot fix, hot fix hyphen. Oh, support hyphen, version like, oh, I always put a V in front, which is the way I roll. There we go, so I'm initialized now. So now what I want to do is git flow feature start feature hyphen two. Yep, hopefully it'll be feature hyphen two, not feature feature two. It's on feature feature two, damn it. Okay. Um, Git flow help. Git flow feature feature. Uh, I think it's finish. Yeah, finish feature hyphen two. Version to stem. Okay, there we go. So git flow feature start two. I give me feature hyphen two. There we go. Thank God for that. It shows you how often I use this command. <laughs> I do it the old-fashioned way, personally, just because that's just the way I roll. Um, but I'm going to try and get into doing this. So that's Git Flow. It's fantastic. If you want, I'm going to link off of the video to this. Uh, here's how it works. If you want a really long-winded explanation of how it works with different hotfixes and version releases and all that kind of thing, and great uh, explanations there that I'll link to the video. Um, for now, I've got my feature branch. I can go and uh, write code. So in here. What do I want to do? It's like, well, as a developer, I want to uh, use this how I'd normally use it. Now, if I was normally developing, I'd actually do that. So I'd uh, include from ground up DB slash and then the main header file name, which is normally the same as the project name. Yeah. Now, that's not how I'm currently doing things in here. Um, but I really should make my tests work exactly the way an application would work. So I know that these things work. What I need to do here is say, well, okay, where is it looking for this includes from? And that is from this defines.pre file. Now, what it's doing there is it's pulling in um, the location. So I'm going to make this, instead of pulling it in present working directory, is working directory of this defines file, which is groundupdb slash groundupdb. Now, that would give me an include uh, location of ground up db slash ground up db slash ground db dot h, <laughs> which is not. So by making this the directory above, um, what I'm basically saying is instead of me linking directly into ground up db, I'm going to require the guy writing the tests to link into to type this in, which now works. I'll just go and make sure that that works on here again. Again, that doesn't work. Ground up db slash. Yeah, so now that works. So that's great. So I've done that. Um, what I want to do now though is make it easy for me to package these headers up. Now at the moment, it might look like these headers and sources are separate. But if we look on the file system over here, yeah, can I zoom in there actually? And I echoes like, oh, there we go. So if I zoom in a bit there, uh, what we see is uh, actually within my ground up duty folder, they're all just bunched in the same folder. Now I've created these two files just recently. But at the moment, they're just bunched in there. Now, that's no good for me. I want an include folder, which I can then easily package up and send those includes to my users um, in a particular, you know, includes directory. So it would be slash other slash source slash uh, so other local source include or whatever it is, slash ground up DB slash, and then my database dot H and my ground up DB dot H. So in order to do that, on an include folder and a source folder. So what I need to do here, now I could do it in here and I could rename each of these files individually, but that's a pain in the posterior. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quit out Qt Career. And then in here, I'm going to drag my H files into include. I'm gonna drag my CPP files into source. Yep. And then what I'm gonna do is relaunch Qt Creator. Or Qt Creator even, I keep saying Qt. Um, open up ground up DB. And in here, we will see <gasps> my source code's all gone. It hasn't, don't worry. So I can add an existing directory. So I'm going to choose include, I'm going to choose source, click on OK. Uh, and because the settings in here know that include and source are special folders, it does the right thing. 
hashtag do the right thing um, and pulls them in that way so if I open up this file here uh, it can't find it <gasps> oh my word what's going on yeah so um, these work fine because they're all in the same folder right so they work fine this one however gets a bit confused and that's because in here um, what we need is we need to make sure it's using the subfolder so what I basically do is uh, these have changed so I'll get rid of those because otherwise it will get confused for the rest of its life and I put in the oops what happens when you copy things um, but include plus plus equals include because that's where my include is now yeah so if I do that and then open up this file one two miss a few nine nine hundred there we go and it's all working now so that's great so I've now put them in the include folder and source folder let's make sure my test things working again I go back into here da -da -da. oh no we can't find it now why can't it find it well because it's not there it's actually there yep now that will work however again I'm not testing it the way an end user would use it so I can't have I can't have it both ways right I can't have it in an include folder here uh, and not include include folder there um, and I can't just get rid of all of it because then I wouldn't have ground up DB slash so how do I get around this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very, very naughty. I'm going to add a new file into the headers with the same name as my root folder, as uh, my root include file. Yep. Yep. Uh, change it on disk. Oh, was it done the wrong? Th it's done the wrong thing. That's annoying. Oh, right then. Git status. Git reset. Round up db slash uh, include slash round up db dot h. There we go. What happens when you just click next and don't read what it's actually telling you? Uh, hopefully that's actually fixed my problemo. It was I actually doing anything in that thing. Yeah, I've I've managed to overwrite my header file here, which is a bit annoying. Um <clears throat> uh, Reset. It's going to be give me a file. Or not. You know what? I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way and copy it out of GitHub. Oh, oh. Oh dear God, I really must learn not to click on things. Let this be a lesson to you. Don't just click on things and accept them. Uh, okay, so this is what I want. What I want, what I really, really want. I want to stop clicking on things. Right, let us try this again. That's what needs to be in there. Yep, means that should now work. Yes. Now, what I'm going to do here, add new edit file ground dot db dot h continue done right phone file already exists in the folder would you like to overwrite them uh, I think we'll go to that done Mine. Yeah, do it the old fashioned way. Uh, Right, there we go. So we've now got a ground db.h here and a ground db.h here. 
now massively puking um, because what it's doing is it's pulling in the top level include here. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do hash include uh, include and do h. Now what I'm not doing is I'm not doing any if defs here, and the reason for that is because they exist in here. Now if I put them in here, then my tests would be going through this file to get to the ground up db.h file here. Yeah. So I could accidentally delete these here, but not pick up by using my tests that this was broken. I'm deliberately doing nothing in here. This is literally the only thing I'm going to ever do. I'm going to close that file. Now, what this means is these files are all going through uh, the include folder. Yeah. Apart from this one, it goes through this to get to there doesn't really matter in the end um, and then in here what I'm doing here oops if I go into here I'm just including them as normal and because it's going from here it's finding this one yep yeah, by doing that and this one pulls in these yep yeah. so now it works for both my tests and my uh, main which is great but what I want to also do is make sure that this still works so again Need to make sure I do that. Yep. Okay, good. So now that works, let's just build everything, make sure it all builds properly. Yeah. And what I always do is when the build's complete, run my test again. Just to make sure. I didn't know, I didn't change them, but paranoia is good. So uh, we now have confirmed that that works. Okay, which is great. So we've now done that. Now, that's one thing, atomic unit of uh, change. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go back into ground up DB and do a git status. Uh, oh yeah. In the test directory. Try that again. No, oh, yeah, it's a bit more like it. Now you notice I've added a bunch of code in here, so I'm going to do uh, git add dot, very naughty, git commit minus m, and my commit message is going to be um, uh, created, uh, no, um, now following standard include pattern, there we go, so there we go, so now I've committed that, now that's not the end of my feature, because I've got several stories in my feature. So that's the first one. So let's go and have a look at what the other ones were. So I go back into my issues. I'm still in issue two, so I'm on feature two. So uh, I've done the includey thing, which is good. Um, but now I need a namespace. This is true. So I need to do my namespaces. So um, in order to do that, what I need to do in my header file is basically say, well, okay, anything in here is in a particular namespace. So this is namespace. Now I'm going to call it ground up db because it should be the name is your include, same as your include folder. Uh, why should it? Well, because I said so. Um, no, but seriously, um, there's standard naming conventions that a lot of C++ projects follow. If you're interested, um, a good example of a style guide, I'm not saying it's the be all and end all, but this is Google's C++ style guide. So they've got lots of advice on here around comments and things like that. I don't, I don't follow their advice on documentation. I tend to use Doxygen, but... Uh, here, you know, the namespace conventions I tend to follow and I tend to keep it pretty similar to this, to be fair. My style is very close to Google style anyway, which is quite handy. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So I'll now put that in here, which is fine. But I also need to make sure it's in here. And put that there. So that's now in there, which is great. Um, I've been naughty. I've not changed it in here. But, um, what I should be doing is I should be saying, well, okay, this is a uh, ground up DB column column. Now what I could do is I could just say using namespace, but I'm not really validating that that's how my system works if I just say using namespace all the time. So I'm gonna make them explicit. So I've done that here. And again, I'm gonna need to do it on these classes here. And importantly, here. Now you're probably wondering why I'm just not doing auto here. There's a good reason for that. It won't actually work at the moment. Um, well, that's, not, that's not a good reason, incidentally. That's just a fact. Um, yeah, so now using namespaces. Um, that was a relatively easy thing to do, right? Oh, no, actually, no. They're in here. 
Um, what I will do in my source files, I will do using namespace ground up db because these are the source files for my project, so you know that's kind of a given, right? Um, you shouldn't always do that, but to be fair, if it's the implementation of your own package, you know you can do it. I, would just, I wouldn't do that in your application code, but given that this is you know the default namespace for everything I'm doing, it makes sense for me to do that. So that's now happening there. So now if I rebuild, something's going to crap out because I've not updated the CLI. Um, so in here, for example, and da, 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 no. what I can do here is I'm going to do the same thing again, again, because I'm naughty using namespace ground up DB. So now if I recompile, you'll see all those red things go away. And again, <laughs> excuse me. Oh, blow up hay fever kicking my ass again. So if we uh, now build, it looks like it succeeded. Doesn't really tell you. Uh, so and success passed. Okay, great. So now it's another atomic thing we've done. So we go back to, I really should shortcut this. Um, there's a way of doing that in ZSH, but I can never remember. So uh, git status, make sure I'm not broken anything. Uh, yep, looks good. Git uh, add dot, again, naughty. Git commit minus m added ground up db namespace. There you go, so that's another thing. But I'm not finished yet. Still not finished. Still got another user story to do. Boom, boom, boom. Um, so I've done that now. So I've got namespaces in there. 